Greetings, everyone, and welcome. I'm your host, Captain Rye, and today's video comes to us courtesy of my clanmate, Pep. And Pep is playing in one of my favorite Tier 6 premium cruisers here in World of Warships. That's right, he's playing in the HMAS Perth. As the battle gets underway, it's Trident. It's standard battle mode, and there are carriers in play. There are only Tier 5 carriers, though, so manual dropping is fortunately not in play in this game. And that's important because the Perth does not have the best anti-aircraft. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do to improve that, but one of the things you can do to improve that, as well as improve your spotting and your ability to spot torpedoes, destroyers and see what's going on when you're inside your smoke screen is having that catapult fighter now pep here i don't know if this is a mistake in your loadout though judging by the fact that it's the premium one i'm thinking you might just not be up on it but i see that you have the uh, catapult scout there now that's going to increase his range and you can see the range bumps out from a little over 12 kilometers there to 15 kilometers so this is going to let pep reach out and touch this congo from quite a distance now the reason why i say that this is not necessarily the best option for this ship is again it goes down to that anti-aircraft you have very limited aa and having that fighter very important more importantly you can get the captain skill the dual catapult fighters and you can get them up there and you can basically double cover yourself especially if you get one shot down by something like a cleveland or an atlanta if you find yourself up tiered now Pep is putting out the high explosive here, and you'll notice that he's actually still moving. He's sailing slowly at about a quarter of his max speed, and this is because of the way the smokescreen on the Perth works. If you're not familiar with this smokescreen, it's a very unique smokescreen. Each puff of smoke only lasts 15 seconds, but it generates for quite some time. So that generator stays active, which means if you slow down to that quarter speed, that eight knots, yeah, it's not moving very fast, but you can basically create yourself a nice rolling smoke screen and you can use it to move across the battlefield. It also tends to throw a lot of battleship players and a lot of cruiser players and a lot of destroyer players off when they're trying to target your smoke screen because they think, oh, well, smoke screen, I'll just fire into the center of it, but the center of it keeps moving. Now, there is a special module that you can get for this ship. Well, just in general, from Super Containers, it's the Smokescreen Generator Model. What that does is it reduces the length of time that each puff sticks around for. But because we're talking 15 seconds here as it is, reducing that length of time down to 12 seconds is not that big of a deal. What it does, however, is increases the length of time that the smoke screen will generate for, and it will generate for a long time. Very, very useful in this ship. The other thing that I want to point out with this ship here is that if you use the concealment expert on the captain, you don't need to have this scout launched uh, aircraft up because your detection range is 8.7 kilometers, very, very short, while well, you have a gun range of 12 kilometers. This means that you can get well within your gun range before you're going to be spotted. So combine that with the smoke screen, very, very useful. Now, as the battle is going on here, both teams have lost a ship. The enemy team has lost a Congo early on, and it looks like they're just about to lose that Texas there. Now, that was a good combination of high explosive fire from Pep here, though he did do a little bit of a kill steal, but he did set that guy on fire, so he was burning him down there, but the carrier just dropped on him and that's a gutsy move for a carrier at tier 5 considering the Texas has some particularly nasty anti-aircraft so very very good although that might not necessarily have been the aircraft carrier that could have been the destroyer that's down there in the corner hard to tell Pep however did secure his first kill in the game enemy Omaha moving about there now this is where switching back and forth between the armor piercing and the high explosive becomes important unlike the British light cruiser line this ship does get both and i see a lot of people who play the perth will just sit there and they will spam the high explosive and that's not necessarily a bad thing but as you can see here these little six inch guns will citadel 
other cruisers, even heavy cruisers if you find yourself up tiered, but at shorter ranges. So you can get the shots out there and you can cause some significant problems for enemy cruisers who choose to broadside. And sometimes, well, they will choose to broadside, partly because they see a Perth, and if they have experience playing against it, they their experiences are usually, oh, he's gonna spam high explosive. Now, with somebody like me, I happen to have inertia fuse high explosive on my Perth captain, which means I can actually penetrate and citadel with my high explosive, so sailing broadside onto me is never a good idea, regardless of what ammo type I'm using. Enemy Budioni out there also sailing broadside on, but he's maneuvering hard there. Now, friendly torpedoes coming in there looks good on him. Can Pep get more damage done onto him before the inevitable? Come on, get those shots off there. Oh no, those shots didn't quite reach it, but those were excellent, excellent torpedoes by the friendly destroyer. And I think that was actually the friendly Farragut there. A little bit of a replay glitch there as it kind of lagged out there. Now, if you do lag in the game like that, it actually does show up in your replay. So just be aware of that if you're sending me a replay file. If you lag out, it's going to show you lagged out there. So Pep, maybe consider getting better internet. Now, Pep is laying down a smoke screen here because he was taking shots at that Budioni and didn't want to be spotted. One of the biggest things you have to remember playing the Perth, of course, is that you don't have a heal. You are not a British light cruiser, so you don't get that heal ability. Which means you staying hidden, not being spotted, and not being shot at for as long as possible in the game is an absolute must. Enemy Perth there spotted in the open, but he's dropped off detectability, which means he's probably not firing anymore. Now, Perth, however, uh, Pep, however, is firing and he is spotted. He's also moving at full speed here as he's trying to get some distance there, but he takes a hit from that Graf Spee, who is maneuvering hard. Now, he's firing the armor piercing, and with the Graf Spee, unless he's giving you a direct broadside at a close enough range, I would say you're better off simply firing the high explosives. Just burn that guy down. He's not a British battleship, so doing that is fine. Here we have a French baguette. And you can see here, the French baguette is going to maneuver. Now, the Frenchies actually have weaker armor around their citadel than some of the other cruisers in the game. And if you have inertia fuse high explosive, you can citadel them from the front like this with your high explosive. Now, in this case, Pep here took a little too many salvos to switch over to the high explosive here. And of course, as he does, what does that cruiser do? He turns broadside on. Also takes a big hit there from another friendly ship, probably one of the battleships there, and Pep manages to secure the kill, finishing him off with high explosive. So that's going to be kill number two for Pep. And at this point, his team is actually doing really, really well. They've only lost three ships. It looks like they've lost three cruisers. The enemy team has lost two battleships, including a very, very good anti-aircraft battleship being the Texas. Again, remember, there are carriers in the game, and those Tier 5 carrier aircraft do not hold up against the Texas. They really, really don't. There's still an enemy destroyer out there somewhere, but Pep's team has a friendly destroyer, and of course, as I always like to say, the Perth, with the right captain skills and played appropriately, is really nothing more than a larger destroyer. It just happens to have a citadel. And secondaries. And the ability to launch a catapult aircraft. Or two and have hydro, and have smoke. No heal, but oh well. The other thing that this ship also gets that we'll see Pep not use in this game because he didn't hit that three key again is the ability to single launch torpedoes. Now, you can launch them in a narrow spread like you do normally, or you can launch them in a single shot like you do with the British light cruiser line. This is kind of a good thing to use when you've got a bow on battleship or a battleship coming around an island who's not paying attention because you can just hit all of your torpedoes all right at once and finish them off outright. Now, this enemy Bayern is 
thoroughly focused and concentrated on taking out the friendly battleships on Pep's team there. He's not paying attention to the fact that there is effectively a broadside cruiser for him to shoot at. And it's about this point when he finally, finally starts looking this direction as he turns that it's just really too late there. He starts targeting. You can see here he's got the priority target up. This battleship really wants the shot, but... Pep's disappearing behind an island, and between his fire and those shots, that battleship didn't stand a chance. But the enemy team is not out of it yet at this point. You can see here they've managed to keep the game relatively close. They're only about 120 points difference here. Both teams still have their carriers in play. Both teams still have their one destroyer in play. So, in this respect, we can honestly say that both teams' carriers and destroyers are at the very least somewhat competent. And now that the target field has narrowed down, this is when having that catapult fighter against the enemy carrier is going to become important, especially if you've got two of them, because that enemy carrier is going to start looking for targets that he know he can hit, preferably targets he can take out of the game because his team needs the points. In standard battle mode, again, you have to remember those points matter because there are only two caps, and it takes a long time to cap those locations. And oftentimes, you'll run out of time before the end of the battle, and the team with more points is going to win, regardless of the position and the number of ships on those teams. As you can see there, the enemy team finally did manage to take out their destroyer. That's bad news, because it means that enemy destroyer is going to have free reign to do whatever he wants. Sort of. Provided he doesn't get spotted. And that's the key factor when playing a destroyer, especially if the enemy team has lost their destroyer. Now the Perth, again, like I said, is a very good ship to play almost as a heavy destroyer because it has a low detectability range when you have the proper captain skills. Now, Pep here is detected, and that's the enemy destroyer has popped up. The enemy Fubuki has popped up very, very close. And I'm not sure what Pep was looking at here, but he's not getting shots off as quickly as he could be. But that Fubuki, very low health, so hopefully these will end that Fubuki. And yes, they do. Of course, he also takes a hit from somebody else at the same time there. Now, in this particular situation, you got to remember, turn your ship and your guns. The turrets on the Perth don't turn as quickly as they could... So, if you want to get shots on a fast-moving target like an enemy destroyer like that at these kinds of ranges, turn your ship really quickly, get those turrets on target to bear, fire those shots, and then turn back bow on so you can do some torpedo beats if you need to. Now, Pep has got his hydro acoustic up here just in case the Fubuki got more torpedoes away there, and it very might well be the case because once the Fubuki got three sets of triple launchers. So nine potential torpedoes there, but it doesn't look like that's the case. Now, the anti-aircraft here is working itself as hard as it can, trying to shoot at them, but there's not a lot of long-range AA on this ship, and the close-range AA is also pretty bad. And at this point, given what Pep has taken as far as damage, my guess is that there's not a lot of long-range and or short-range AA left. Now, Pep is going to go ahead. He's popped his smoke screen because he's got a Congo shooting at him. Another one here. And he definitely does not need to be seen, especially at this point in the battle with as much health as he has. Now, that Congo has got a lot of health here. And technically, in a fair fight, that Congo should win. But this is the Perth. It is not a fair fight. Now, that Congo is in torpedo range. So Pep could get his torpedoes away here, and you can see the way this Congo is turning. Now Pep fires off the spread, the narrow spread there, but he could have fired individually. And given the way that this battleship is maneuvering around, I actually would have fired individually. I would have fired two individually where I thought he was going to be, and then I would have held on to the other two on that side just to make sure. Now, because he's bow on here, Pep is firing the high explosive. He's trying to set those fires, but he's got a friendly ship off behind him, a friendly battleship who's in a position to deal some damage. But let's look at the team situation. Both teams are within points of each other. Somehow, some way. More importantly, they both have a carrier, a cruiser, and a battleship left. Now, Pep's managed to set that Congo on fire, and he's burning down nicely, and you see that Congo's closing in there, and he's very, very close. The smoke screen's about to wear out, so Pep hits the gas, all ahead, flank speed, 
dodges the shots coming in from their battleship, and their battleship is getting close enough to spot him in that smoke screen. Anyway, what Pep needs to do here as he dodges a set of dive bomber bombs is continue to put the effort out. Now, you can see there that Congo still on fire there, so he's burning down. Can Pep get the kill before that Congo can reload? Come on. Yes, he does manage to do it, and he survives by the skin of his teeth. Plus, his friendly teammates managed to take out that enemy cruiser. So now there's just the carrier left. And it's a Bogue. So I don't think he's got torpedo bombers, but he definitely has dive bombers. And again, the anti-aircraft. Now the other thing that I was going to point out here was you'll notice that while he was sitting in a smoke screen, either his fighter got shot down or the timer on it ran out. That's the disadvantage to using the scout. Well, it does increase your range. It has a shorter duration versus the cruiser catapult fighter has a duration of something like six minutes with the premium one. This means if you get the double catapult fighter flight ops option, that's a tier one captain skill. I recommend it with cruisers. Well, it reduces the top speed of that fighter, you get two of them. So you can constantly be scanning. And since they last six minutes, you can basically put them up at the beginning of the game and utilize your smoke screen twice before they're going to go back on cooldown. Now, given the position where those bombers are coming from, and yes, I will correct myself, apparently that Bogue does have torpedo bombers, one squadron, but look how many torpedo bombers he's got left. One. One in the squadron. That's a good thing. A bad thing, however, is the fact that, as we're going to see, the Dive Bomber Squadron is full strength. That's a lot of potential bombs here. Now, provided this Torpedo Bomber gets shot down, and I would still be focusing my AA on it just out of habit, but again, provided he doesn't get hit by them, it shouldn't be too bad, but look at the Dive Bomber accuracy there. At least two hits, two fires going on there. Pep Pops his damage control here, and this is a problem because here comes the torpedo bombers. Remember, in this case, in this situation, what you want to do when you're dealing with torpedo bombers is to turn into them, not away from them, because as you see there, that torpedo almost clipped the front of the bow, and if it had, Pep would be dead right now. Torpedo might not have sunk him outright, but it would have caused flooding, and it would have finished him off at this point. And that's the last thing we want, because, if you'll notice, Pep has got four kills in this game, and it would be wonderful if he could get a Kraken unleashed. However, there's now only two minutes left in the game. And again, this is where that carrier focusing you down and having that catapult option, something to defend yourself with, especially if you're as damaged as you are with most of your anti-aircraft guns destroyed, really, really does become a very important and very essential part of the cruiser loadout for the Perth. Because that carrier knows he's not necessarily going to be able to win unless he sinks a ship. And Pep is the lowest health ship that he knows he can sink. Because, again, anti-aircraft on this ship is not particularly good. So here come the dive bombers yet again. Fortunately, no more torpedo bombers. It looks like Pep did manage to shoot them down. He's shot one of the dive bombers down. But as you can see there, they're coming in there. So you got to start swinging that ship around. Start getting the maneuvering. Don't let them get a good lineup on you if you can avoid it. And yes, he does manage to avoid it. Use the maneuverability of this cruiser it's very maneuverable again it's almost like a large destroyer and there is the enemy aircraft carrier now high explosive will penetrate and will citadel the bogue as we will see here and cause a lot of damage again using that three key tapping it again to do a single launch here would probably been a very very good option now Manages to sit at all the Bogue as he moves behind it. If you've got the inertia fuse high explosive, again, the high explosive will absolutely sit at all this ship. So, with 17 seconds left, can Pep secure the kill? Come on, the reload rate on these guns is actually pretty good. Are the torpedoes going to reach it in time? Can he get the kill? Yes, he does to earn himself a Kraken Unleashed and 100,000 cool damage done in that game. 201 hits, only one torpedo hit, and it was the one, of course, right at the very end that counted. Five planes shot down, probably would have been a little bit more with a catapult fighter as opposed to the scout spotter. 
five enemy ship sunks, nine fire set, two citadels, and nine secondary hits. People tend to forget this cruiser does have secondaries, and I've had a few close quarter experts come off the perth, and it's always funny when I get them. Of course, with a result like that, top of the team for XP earned. Surprisingly enough, the next guy on the team, the New York. Well, not surprisingly enough, he did survive to the end. The Farragut, who did a very good job there, at least at the beginning and the midway through the battle before he got taken out, third on the team. Anyway, that's it for today's video, folks. If you liked the video, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. If you'd like to get semi-regular channel news and updates, especially after this last week where I didn't have a PC, you can do so by following me on Facebook and get any of those updates that pop up as they pop up if something disastrous like that should happen again. Hopefully not. If you've got a replay like this one that you'd like to see featured on my channel, you can send it to my email if you'd like to help support me and the channel, I encourage you to do so by becoming my supporter on Patreon. And if you'd like to watch me play various games live, you can do so by following me on Twitch. You can find the links for all of those in the video description down below. And as always, I'll see you next time. This is Captain Rye, signing off.